So you are a current nurse practitioner student or prospect nurse practitioner student and wonder what you can do to prepare before clinical training. In this episode, I'm going to talk about five things you should do to prepare for clinical training. Let's dive in. Before we're going to get into today's topic, I want to share with you an exciting news that we're going to have the very first free workshop coming up on January 20th. The topic for this workshop is about how to boost your confidence. If you want to be successful in America, confidence is the key. If you are confident and you can show that you're confident to others, You are more likely to get into your dream nurse practitioner programs. You're more likely to get better grades. You're more likely to get a job. And you're more likely to get pay raises. So it's very important to build, boost, and demonstrate your confidence to others. But it's not easy to build confidence, especially if you are an international student. I know this because I experienced that on my own. But there are things you can do to boost your confidence so you can get more opportunities. To sign up for this free workshop, you can go to usa.janpproject.com slash confidence dash workshop. usa.janpproject.com slash confidence dash workshop. Please sign up I want to see your faces, and I'm excited to talk to you. All right, let's get into today's topic. So today's episode is about five things you can do before clinical training, clinical rotation. So I always tell my students, I'm a, a preceptor for nurse practitioner students, but I always tell my students that clinical rotation is not just to learn at a clinical sites or to learn at a clinical setting, but also that can be an um, opportunity for you to get a job after you graduate from nurse practitioner program because your preceptor is watching you, how you perform, maybe your preceptor's coworkers are watching your performance and see and if you know, you're hireable after um, you graduate from the program. So you want to perform, You not only that you want to learn a lot during the rotation, but you also want to perform well so you can demonstrate, hey, I'm going to be a wonderful, excellent nurse practitioner. You should hire me. So you can have more opportunities and you can choose from multiple job offers. So you want to perform well. And how you do that is you prepare well before clinical rotation. So I'm going to teach you five things you should do before clinical rotation. All right, ready? So the first thing is to understand requirements to pass the class. Um, that sounds basic, but a lot of times um, the preceptors are very busy clinicians. I know this firsthand because I'm also a nurse practitioner, you know, practicing nurse practitioner. So you know, uh, from preceptor's perspective, we have so many things to juggle. We have to make sure we take care of patients, you know, safely, obviously. But we also have to see certain amount of patients. You know, uh, your uh, the usually the employers say you have to be productive. You have to see so many patients a day, or you know, so, so many patients per hour, and sometimes the bonus which can be a big portion of nurse practitioner's income, depend on the productivity. So there are a lot of pressure for a nurse practitioner to be productive, meaning that see, you know, certain amount of, you know, visits or uh, patients. So practicing nurse practitioner has to be productive, but also they want to teach well to the student. So, you know, there are a lot of things that nurse practitioners have to juggle. So not all preceptors may 
talk to you well about what you have to finish. They might just quickly ask in the beginning of kind of quotation. So why are you here? What are you trying to do here? And if you can't answer that question, then of course the uh, preceptors don't know because they don't work directly for school. And so as a student, it's your job to find out what you must learn during this specific clinical rotation and how you can find out, you know, objectives for the clinical rotation is you look at the syllabus and look at the grading rubrics. It talks about specifics usually, you know, maybe it depends on the program. It might have very specific criteria. So for example, my clinical specialty is Although I'm a family nurse practitioner, I specialize in women's health. So I usually teach women's health rotation for family nurse practitioner students. And it depends on the program, but some program may have very specific criteria, like you must have so many pap smears done, so many pelvic exam done, and so on. So find out... Well, first of all, before you even paying attention to getting good grades, you have to pass the course, obviously. So you, you have to find out what's the minimum requirement, what you have to do. And so that the preceptor can help you to find cases or patients that they can practice, you know, pop smear and stuff like that. So make sure you talk about that. Make sure to search on it and qualify if if the syllabus doesn't say much about what you're supposed to do which happened to me when i was a nurse practitioner student uh, i i got really frustrated that the grading rubric and uh, objectives were very vague which is partially understandable because as a family nurse practitioner you know students go to different clinical sites so it's kind of hard to um, have specific criteria for school because it depends on where students go. So I understand uh, that it, sometimes it's hard, but try to clarify as much as you can because what you don't want to have is a situation that in the middle of the clinical training or toward the end of the clinical training, your clinical instructor tell you, oh, you haven't done 10 pap smears, you're supposed to do 10, and you only have done two, you know, then you'll be like, oh my God, I have very limited time and I don't know if I can meet the criteria. So definitely make sure you understand the requirements of the, cl the specific clinical rotation. And if, if the syllabus doesn't tell you clearly you need to talk to your precept clinical instructor. And the best is actually probably exchange emails so that you have proof that, okay, this is what we discussed, that this is a criteria that I was given. And on the first day of clinical rotation, bring syllabus and grade in rubric and talk about your objectives of this clinical rotation. That actually will be very helpful for preceptors because they know, okay, this is what we have to do. And then they can tailor your clinical training experience based on your requirements because preceptors want you to be successful, but they need to know exactly what you're supposed to do. So definitely look at the syllabus and not only just read it, if you have some questions or unclear points about the syllabus or grading rubrics, it's students' responsibility to clarify, to make sure. Another thing that I had experienced was my student, I guess she didn't realize that she has to get some detailed information about cases that she saw. And, and then toward the end of the clinical rotation, well, th this was a very special situation that the, the COVID pandemic happened and she couldn't come in and she asked me if I can send the progress note to her or email her and obviously I can't do that because it's you know that contains private information and I'm not supposed to give that information to anybody else especially if it's not good for patients 
clinical, you know, management, and also I need to get patients permission. But even with the permission, I'm not supposed to just send a, you know, the, the scan and send a progress note to students because student was supposed to get those information when they are in the clinical site. So she didn't realize that until, you know, toward the end of the, the rotation. So you, you can see she was in a big trouble. She was able to graduate. So I'm so happy. And she was an excellent student. So, but, you know, maybe, you know, you need to know, you need to know what's required beforehand and talk about that on the first day during clinical rotation with your preceptor so that you can have a great clinical experience. And the second thing you should do is which topics you need to learn during clinical rotation. So now we talked about the uh, requirements, like specific procedures or how many patients you have to see during the rotation. But this is about more topic. Like, is there any topics that you should cover? So for example, for women's health, maybe school has some topics that generally the students should see, like, you know, a woman exam or, uh, you know, breast, bre breast problem or uh, menstrual problem or PCOS and those kind of um, common OBGYN um, issues that they have to learn during the rotation. Sometimes school don't have, then you can discuss with your preceptor preferably on the first day and see, you know, is there anything that you would recommend to go over during the rotation? If you don't have that, then, you know, you just see whatever patient comes in. I mean, I understand for urgent care, that might be, you know, the case because the preceptors don't have control over you know, what, what kind of visits that they're going to have because it's urgent care. You don't know what kind of patients you can, uh, they're going to have until, you know, they actually see the patients. Um, so urgent care is a little bit different, but you can also talk to them and say, hey, you know, I want to make sure I see suture cases. I want to practice suture or, you know, like, you know, like the basics. So you can have some kind of list I, I have my own list if in case if the school don't have, I have a list of common GYN or OBGYN problem that nurse practitioner should, students should see. And I usually go over that during the first day of their clinicals so that when they finish clinical rotation with me, they have a sense of, okay, I was able to kind of grasp the general picture of, you know, primary care uh, OBGYN practice. So, you know, that would be very helpful so that your clinical experience is not just, just pregnancy cases again and again and again, and you realize you didn't do any GYN cases or pap smears. So talk to your preceptor. So beforehand, talk to your school and see what kind of topics you should see. And if there's no no, no guideline, you can talk to your preceptor and see what kind of topics you should go through during rotation. And also ask about important guidelines that you should be familiar with. And then also because of this DNA age, you can ask like, what kind of resources that you can use, which I'm going to talk about in a bit. Okay, the third thing is to practice case presentation, oral case presentation. I cannot say this enough that oral case presentation is very important skill because as a nurse practitioner, well, well, as a student, first of all, you report your case to your preceptor. And remember, preceptors has very busy schedule. They're not only teaching you, but also they see patients, so many patients and pa they they can't let patients wait too long, so they have to run the clinic smoothly. So oral case presentation should be concise, but it is a skill that you need to practice over and over to be good at. 
also, when you become an independent nurse practitioner, you talk to your collaborating physicians or specialists, or you talk to maybe senior nurse practitioners to consult, or you may be sending your patients to ER, so you're going to talk to ER providers about a case. And in any of these situations, again, you need to be concise about the case. So you need to be very good at oral case presentation. You don't need to master the case oral case presentation before you're going to go into clinical rotation because you can, that's the place that you can practice. However, I would highly recommend to learn the basics of oral case presentation because, you know, preceptors don't have time to teach you from 101 super basic oral case presentation. So, and, you know, I think that schools, nurse practitioner programs should teach that and hoping that you are getting to, or you are in a program that teach you oral case presentation. But if not, good news is I made an episode about case, um, oral case presentation. So if you haven't looked at the, the episode or video, highly recommend to watch it um, so that you can be familiar with oral case presentation and during the clinical rotation you can practice but if you know the basics I guarantee that your clinical preceptor will be like wow he or she you are very good Uh, I'm very excited to work with you so make sure to know the basics before oral before your your clinical rotation fourth thing is to get resources so you know, you know that you're going to have whatever, you know, adult rotation or women's health rotation in spring or whenever, you know your schedule already. So get your resources beforehand. Don't get it after, you know, well, you know, after so many months into the clinical rotation because you're, you're paying the money and you want to, you know, you want to make sure you 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 know the money is worth also you want to be efficient as much as you can so you know one thing you can do is talk to your you know peers who already finish the rotation ask like what kind of resources that was helpful you can talk to your clinical instructor about what kind of resources that you should get you can also talk to your preceptors I usually talk about that during the first day of a clinical rotation and, you know, talk about what kind of resources I usually recommend to my patients. Oh, I'm sorry, students and, you know, download apps and stuff like that. So, you know, get your resources ready because once you start clinical rotation, you're going to be busy and, you know, you might have to get shipping from Amazon and stuff like that. And you wait weeks and weeks, who knows how long it's going to take, especially if you live in Hawaii. The final thing is make sure to plan enough time for clinical rotation. I can't emphasize this enough because I know as you know, you might be working. I was working as a nurse when I was in a nurse practitioner program. You know, there are many things happening in your life. You might be busy, but remember, you're the one who decides to go into nurse practitioner program. And your priority should be nurse pac- graduating nurse practitioner program on time successfully. So I know that you might have to work and stuff like that, but you have to make sure what's your priority right now. To find preceptor itself is hard enough already these days, but you don't want to miss opportunity. You might you don't want to lose your preceptor uh, because. You say, you know, oh, I have to work this day and that day, that day. I can't go in. I only can go in on Saturday. I can do clinical only on Saturdays. Or you might say, you know, I have a big event, big event coming up in two months. So I just want to f- go to your clinic three times a week so I can get it done and I can focus on the other thing. But you remember, Re- Preceptors has a very busy schedule. And um, a lot of preceptors are already reluctant to have students because having students definitely sometimes slow us down. 
and they are already willing to sacrifice their time. But if the students are not flexible enough, they might say, I'm sorry, that doesn't work with me, so you might have to find another preceptor. And that can happen. They don't have an obligation to, to take, you know, a common day schedule. It's a student's obligation to a common day schedule because, you know, they were done, you know, you are the one who are, who decided to go into school. So I understand everything is happening. So it's very important to, you know, look ahead and then make sure you talk to your work employer if you're working as a nurse or you're working beside school and make sure that you can be flexible beforehand so that you can accommodate clinical time. Because the worst case scenario, which happened to me before, not that I wasn't, and thankfully my employer at the time was very flexible, but you know, my preceptor decided not to take student in the last minute. Then I have to wait for school to find another preceptor. It took a while, so I had to wait, just wait. Although the semester started already, I had to wait and wait uh, for school to find a preceptor. Then it took a while, and then I started my clinical rotation weeks after the, the clinic, the semester started. So... That was very stressful. So you don't want to miss your opportunity. So make sure that you can be, you can have some flexibility and in your, you know, your, your schedule so that you can match with preceptor's schedule and you don't miss opportunity. So there are five things we discussed today. Five things you can do to prepare before clinical rotation. So understand requirements, look at the syllabus, look at grading rubrics, ask questions to your clinical instructors, preferably through the emails, and then also learn about what, know what kind of topics you should learn during the rotation. And you can also start learning those topics. Definitely recommend to, you know, head start. So when you go there, it's not going to be like, okay, so what is PCOS? You want to have like, Okay, so yeah, I learned a PCOS. And if, you know, you have, when you have basics, your clinical preceptor will be like, oh, wonderful. So, you know, they can teach you more advanced stuff instead of, you know, you just have no idea. And preceptors don't have time to teach you from, from scratch. You have to do your part too. And then the third thing is pra learn the basics of oral case presentation and if you don't know the basics, there is an episode. So look at that. And then the fourth thing is get resources. And the final thing is plan enough time for clinical. I hope this episode was helpful. And make sure to sign up for a free workshop about how to boost your confidence happening on January 20th. I'm hoping to see you there and have a great week. Aloha.